Hey guys, do it yourself in your flaw cart. And in today's video, I'm showing you guys how to change your oil in a 2019 and up Chevy Silverado. This video is going to be geared towards beginners and I have all the supplies that you're gonna need right here. First, you're gonna need the proper oil for your vehicle. We're gonna need a new oil filter. We're gonna need some gloves to keep the oil off of our hands. We've got a flashlight. We've got an oil filter wrench, a couple different sizes of filters, a socket and ratchet paper towels, something to raise our vehicle up with, whether that's a jack and jack stands or ramps, and also a oil catcher in the form of some sort of pan or bucket. Without further ado, let's jump into it. As someone new to changing your oil, the task can seem quite overwhelming, but I assure you that after this video, you'll be able to change your own oil and save yourself some money in the process. The steps to change your oil are first to select the proper oil and quantity for your vehicle. Next, we're going to buy ourselves an oil filter. Then we're going to drain the oil and remove the old filter. And finally, we're going to install our new filter and fill up our engine with the specified amount of oil that we need. First step, selecting the right engine oil. Most vehicles will specify the type of oil needed on the oil cap under the hood of your vehicle and can also be found within the owner's manual. The owner's manual will also specify the proper volume of engine oil that should be going into your engine. Now that we've determined the type of oil needed for our vehicle, it's time to buy the correct oil along with the correct oil filter from the store. There's a ton of different oil viscosities and different brand names at the store. Personally, I always go with a fully synthetic oil as most new vehicles need it and it lasts longer than normal old engine oil. For this specific vehicle, it also specifies we need a Dexos oil. Dexos oil is the approved type of engine oil for these vehicles by GM and is specifically formulated for proper lubrication, sludge reduction, friction level moderation, and controlling temperature. So a good idea to go with the recommended oil as this engine is designed to use it. So in this case, we are looking for a fully synthetic Dexos oil with a 0W20, as this is what our owner's manual calls for. We also need eight quarts of oil, and since these are five quart jugs, we're gonna need two jugs. Now that we have our jugs of new oil, we need to find a new oil filter. This is really quite simple. Go up to the parts desk and tell them the year, make and model, and engine of your vehicle. They will then proceed to go into the back and grab you the proper filter. Now with our new oil and filter purchase, the next step is to drain our oil. Since we're changing the oil on our Silverado, this step isn't necessary, but I find it really nice to have the vehicle raised in order to change the oil. Once on the ramps, you want to ensure the parking brake is set so the vehicle won't roll on you while you're underneath it. Next, we need to determine where our oil drain plug is and oil filter are. On the Silverado, it is just behind the skid plate, fairly centered under the vehicle, located here. Now we can slide our oil catcher underneath the truck and position it properly. Then use our ratchet and 15 millimeter socket to turn the oil drain plug counterclockwise to loosen it. Once loose, finish unthreading the drain plug with your fingers. With the drain plug almost out, I like to apply a little bit of pressure towards the oil pan on the drain plug to keep the oil from leaking out while trying to unthread it. Allow the oil to completely drain. You can tell this oil needed to be changed based on the dark color that it has. While the last drops of oil are coming out of the oil pan, go ahead and remove the old oil filter. Using your oil filter wrench, loosen the filter by turning it counterclockwise. Once loose, remove it by using your hands. This will get messy, so it's a good idea to wear gloves to keep the oil from getting all over your hands. Once unthreaded, keep the filter as upright as possible as this filter is completely full of oil. Gently lower the filter into your oil catcher. We've now drained our old oil and removed our old oil filter, and it's now time to install our new filter and new oil. So now that you've got the old filter off, it's really important to put oil around this gasket to make sure that it seals properly. And the best way to do that is just grab some of the old oil and just wring it around the gasket. That's gonna make it a lot more pliable and you're gonna get a good seal with this gasket. And then you wanna go ahead and install the new filter at this time. A lot of people like to fill their new filter with oil before installing it back onto the truck to make sure oil is already present in the filter instead of running the engine while the filter is empty. Personally, I've never had an issue installing it dry and it only runs dry for a matter of a couple of seconds. Plus, there's a lot of engines out there that are unable to pre-fill the filters because they're mounted upside down or sideways on the engine and they will always run dry on startup and they never seem to have any issues. I find it a lot messier to install them while they're full, so I install empty but never a bad idea to pre-fill your filter. 
You just want this hand tight any tighter, you're gonna have problems and you're not gonna be able to get this off in the future. So make sure you're just putting this on nice and tight, but not too tight. And at this point as well, the oil has been changed. It's just getting a little bit of a drip in there, so that's totally fine. We're gonna go ahead and put the, the oil pan bolt back in place and make sure that's tight as well. But we aren't going to tighten this too tight either. We just want it, we want it tight and snug, but we don't want it too tight on there. And at this point, we have completely drained all of the oil. We've got our new filter in place. The oil pan bolt is back in place. So now we can go ahead and fill up the oil from the top. Go ahead and remove the oil cap and place a funnel in the spout to avoid spilling and just to make life easier. We're filling up eight quarts of oil and with each jug being just over five quarts, we're going to need a full jug and just under three quarts from the second jug. The best way I've found to pour these containers is to actually turn them upside down and they pour a lot more smooth. Once the first jug is in, I like to check under the engine to confirm nothing is leaking before I start pouring the second jug. So based on our owner's manual, we know that this vehicle is gonna take eight quarts. This jug is 5.28 quarts or five liters. So we're gonna to wanna to use the measurement on the side here and we're gonna estimate, I mean, it's not gonna be perfect, but we wanna make sure that we get about three more quarts in uh, to the engine at this point. So we've been using quite a bit. We're gonna come check the oil. So we've used about one and a half, close to two quarts. So we need to put about a quart, quart and a half more in. It's at about 2.5. So that's about three quarts right there. Go ahead, take our funnel out, make sure it's not dripping everywhere. And we'll go ahead and put our oil cap back on. So now that we actually have oil in the engine again, we can go ahead and start this engine up without worrying about damaging anything. Um, you can move it around as you see fit. Uh, in our case, we do have it on the ramp, so we're gonna go ahead and back it up off the ramps, and we can confirm that we do have the amount of oil that we need in there by using the dipstick. So if you guys have never checked the oil level on your dipstick, the dipstick is this yellow, handle right here, you can go ahead and pull it out, but it does give some clear instructions on what to look for in your owner's manual. To check your oil level, you want to first pull out the dipstick and clean it off, then put it back into the engine all the way to the bottom. Next, pull it out again and look at the bottom of the dipstick. On this dipstick, there is a checkered pattern at the bottom, and we want the oil to be above the bottom of the pattern, but below the top end of the pattern. If it is below this, you'll need to add more oil, and if it is substantially above it, you'll need to drain some oil. As you can see, we're on the high end of the pattern, so we're perfect. We've completed changing your oil, and at this point you can drive away knowing the job has been done correctly. But there is one last step, and that's resetting your change oil message. I have the lower trim model, so I will be doing this with the dial, but some of you will be doing this with your steering wheel. Cycle through to the remaining oil life section of your cluster, click and hold to reset. It's going to ask you if you're sure you want to reset it, cycle to yes, and it will reset your remaining oil life to 100%. That's it guys. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed this, please consider subscribing. Until next time, take care.